right now. Today is the day that you choose to change the rest of your life. It is time to turn your setback into the greatest comeback story ever told. And nobody is more capable than you. This is the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast, the future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please subscribe and spread the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast wherever you are and to whomever will listen. If you'd like to connect on social media or wherever else, check out my Linktree page, Linktree forward slash the Ranting Weight Watcher. Let's connect today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 179 of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you to the show. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. If the app you're using allows you to rate the show, please consider leaving a four-star or five-star rating. And also, if it allows you to leave feedback, please consider leaving feedback about the show. When you do this, it updates the algorithm so that when someone else using the same app as you searches for a weight loss related podcast, the ranting weight watcher just comes up just a little higher on that list, enabling me to be easier found. One of the best things you could do to support this podcast is to tell anyone, you know, in the same position we are in trying to live a healthy lifestyle that you think would benefit from my message. Tell them about the podcast, tell them how to find the podcast and tell them when to listen. I want to give a special thanks to the financial supporters of this podcast. Your investment in the future of this podcast is truly appreciated. Thank you so much for everything you've given. If you are interested in becoming a financial supporter of this podcast, the description below will have the link you need. Now, let's get into this! journey updates. I am up this week. Man, the scale was not good to me. (laughs) You know, I'm here five years and never in five years has there been three losses three weeks in a row. There have been times where it was three gains in a row, but never have been times where there were three losses in a row. It would be nice maybe in year, maybe in the year six or something to have, (laughs) to have three Losses in a row would be great. You know, hey, look, I don't ask for much, right? (laughs) But you know how I do it. If I have three gains in a row, it's time to make a change. Otherwise, we depend on what we've created this entire time. The stability in the work gives a foundation of confidence when staring at a three-pound gain out of nowhere. So all we do is it's the first gain, keep going, and so on. You know, every week, I sit in three workshops a week. And countless times, I just decide that I'm going to listen. Other times, if someone says something that moves me to speak, I will then say something there. Other than that, as I listen to other people talk, a lot of the times it's it's heartbreaking what I hear. Now, It's heartbreaking to me. I listen as I can see that there is truly an art to spinning a situation for a positive. 
to take your eyes off of what is true because it is painful to see that. This is an art perfected, perfected by people who are continually failing at working a weight loss program. Doesn't really matter which one. They're all, I mean, in my eyes, they're all the same. It's all a, regardless of what weight loss program you choose, it's all a starting point so that you can learn what is necessary to keep the end result you're looking for. Every weight loss program is not the end. It is only the beginning of your nutritional knowledge. When you get to the end goal of what you wish to be health-wise, the hope is that you learned all the lessons necessary to keep that result. I sit there and listen countless times as people ignore their actual situations in life and they can turn anything from a negative to a positive. I don't really care about the negative to a positive part. That's really for a lack of better words. It really is truth to false. That's really the terminology I should be using here. They can make it so that because the truth is painful, they'll spin it in a way that will make it feel better but in the same process, they're making that truth become false. And these kind of things, they, they kind of make me a little crazy. Because these are the cages we build that imprison us. Whatever blocks you from becoming the ultimate version of you starts there. It starts with the inability to see the truth, and embrace it and, and fix it. It's one thing to not like the truth. It's one, another thing entirely to ignore it because you don't like it. I'm not saying that you should see it, not like it, and then beat yourself up for it because that's equally a waste of energy. I'm saying that you should see it, not like it, and whatever energy you feel in that moment, use it toward fixing it. Because all of that stays if you don't fix it. It doesn't matter how many times you go through the cycle of looking at the truth, getting angry, and beating yourself up. It doesn't matter if every time you skip the one step that's the most important one, fixing it. Fixing it will prevent all of the future occasions of that scenario. Will you find other scenarios to be angry about? Absolutely. But this scenario, this truth that has caused you to become so angry or sad or depressed, as long as that remains, it will continue to be the one thing. And it doesn't matter how you spin it, when you speak in a workshop, everybody knows the truth no matter how you're trying to spin it. You begin to hear things like, oh man, I used to battle nighttime eating. I used to binge eat at 9 o'clock every night. Every night. And I finally conquered it. And then you get this whole long story of how they conquered it. Only to find out, oh, but now my new problem is I'm binge eating at 6 o'clock. You didn't conquer anything. You just changed the time at what you binge eat. It doesn't make any sense. None whatsoever. 
It's like saying I stopped my addiction to gambling by not going to casinos anymore. All I do is play blackjack on my cell phone. I stand here and try to try to iterate what it means to truly be accountable for everything regarding your health. Because as long as you allow these things, as long as you avoid facing truths, as long as there's something you're avoiding, it's going to be the cycle or part of the cycle you continue to perpetuate. And then sometimes people get diagnoses that they don't like from physicians. And one of the first things you'll hear is like, oh, yeah, you know, my grandmother had this, my uncle, my aunt, whatever. They can list a long line of family members that had these conditions. The insinuation is, it's not something I can control. It's something that's been in my lineage 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Doesn't really matter the number. The natural defense to facing a hard truth is to push the blame somewhere else. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm talking to you from experience. Time and time again, the weight gain when I became post-op, when the scale started going in the wrong direction after gastric bypass surgery, I made every delusion for myself to believe. Every last one you could possibly think of. If you ever want an idea, there's a TV show where you can watch People lie to themselves in that process of that whole journey. You can literally watch them lie to themselves and believe their own lies. My 600-pound life. I haven't done it so much in recent history, but I used to force myself to watch this show. I don't think I've done it once since even before the holidays at this point. There was one time, probably right around or right before the holidays that I saw. And uh, I got so angry because I saw so much of myself in the individual on the screen that I actually started yelling at the TV not unlike anybody would yell at the TV when they see uh, a player on their favorite team make a mistake. That's the kind of yelling I'm talking about. But my anger was pure rage. And it was rage because I saw myself in the individual. So I would watch this show countless times in the history to never allow myself to forget everything I did in the process to reverse the result. Not to achieve the result, to reverse it. Because the overwhelming majority of the people that show up on this show you watch them go through it all. And if they actually get to the point to where they get the surgery, you will see if you watch long enough that they start messing up. They aren't learning the lessons. And so many of them never even make it to that point. And you watch them lie to themselves. When the doctor says you need to lose this much weight before I will allow you to have surgery, this is for a reason. 
It's for a reason because if you can't lose this amount of weight, you won't be able to keep the result that he's going to manufacture once he does the surgery. That's the reality of it. Everybody would look at him and probably think he's some, you know, asshole. He's mean to all of the people. But it's not the case. He's just not allowing you to see anything but the hard truth. And the people that deliver hard truth are always considered assholes. When you're hearing the truth from an individual that has no inclination to say anything otherwise, that he is not holding back any punches, the first inclination is to attack the individual. You cannot attack the message because the message is truth. So you attack the messenger instead. And that person becomes evil in anyone's mind because they are pointing out very hard truths. And that's what this doctor does. And all of it is an attempt for you to learn some hard lessons that are going to be necessary to keep the result he will manufacture. And as long as we're not willing to look at truths, we, we can't learn the lessons necessary. Part of the frustration of being me is seeing myself in almost anyone and wanting to stop those people from doing the exact same thing I did. In the process. And others. Wanting to stop them. From enabling their cycle. Their endless. Cycle. The cycle begins. When they are fed up. That's it. I'm going to do it. Then they do a bunch of things the right way. And then they achieve. Some sort of result. A result that, for whatever reason, makes them relax. And because they've been so good, they reward themselves. And that reward is with something that triggers a problem. And then that reward turns into a couple of days of having that problem. And... It goes through this frantic struggle of, okay, we got to get on track. We got to get on track. We got to do everything we need to do to get back on track. But you've had that taste. It's there. And now it's almost like you got to detoxify yourself of that taste all over again from the reward you sought out. But sometimes it gets even worse. And it, the the snowball gets larger and larger and larger and it's rolling down the hill. It's out of control. And the entire cycle comes back to completion because eventually when the snowball becomes big enough, where are you? You're back at fed up. That, that kind of, makes me think of a conversation I just recently had with the therapist that has been on this show, Allison. We were talking about trying to live with the foods that we eat. And it made me realize that there are Two kinds of people in all of this. There are moderators and there are abstainers. Now, what is that? Someone who can eat something in moderation 
and have no issues would be a moderator. And some, someone who can eat something and always have an issue should be an abstainer. The problem is we live in a world full of large companies that people hand their money to and whom they trust to care about their actual health. And these people only care what their stock price is and how happy their shareholders are. That's the truth of it. So how do you keep shareholders happy when you are the CEO of a company? You keep them happy by keeping the pockets fat of the shareholders. And how do you keep the pockets fat? You keep the membership up. And how do you keep the membership up? You make a system that they have to be entirely dependent on while you never promote what would cause them to graduate from it. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. I now present to you the Ranting Weight Watcher Accountability Creed. If you choose this day to say this creed, you are accountable to me, the author. You are also accountable to all of those before you who have taken the creed and all of those after you who will take the creed. But most of all, you are accountable to yourself. Now recite with me the accountability creed. Nothing can stand in my way because I choose to be unstoppable. My challenges crumble in my presence because I choose strength when I am weak. My insecurities have no power over my life because I choose confidence in the face of fear. I own every last one of my mistakes because I choose growth over mediocrity. The mirror and the scale are powerless because I move forward in spite of the result. Circumstances are not obstacles because I see solutions instead of problems. The demons of my past can no longer torment me because I choose to renew my mind daily. All things are possible as long as I believe because if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the creed I declare each day. It is about what I do, not what I say. I will learn the work that needs to be done. I will never stop, even when I've won. I will work consistently, no matter the cost. I refuse to believe that all hope is lost. I will work when I want to. I will work when I don't. I will work when they are cheering. I will work when they won't. I will work when it's easy. I will work when it's hard. The atonements that I've made are made with no regard. I will work when it's cold. I will work when it's hot because choices have consequences, justified or not. When I think I know it all, I will start back at one because regardless of what I think, the work is never done. And from this moment forward, when times are tough, I choose to believe that I am enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. I've told you this before. Everyone who starts anything 
in regards to whatever, whatever something you're trying to learn in life. Everyone should outgrow the first system. Everyone listening to me outgrew elementary school. And so then they went to middle school. And then every one of you who went to middle school outgrew that and you went to high school. And so on. The same thing applies to whatever you are attempting to learn in life. But these systems are put in place and they have very enabling messages. Everything is on the table. You don't have to live without food. The problem is, if you could be a moderator, if any one of you listening to me, including myself, if we could be moderators, if we could eat what we want in moderation, we would never need the systems we chose in the first place. I'll say that again. If we could ever be a moderator, any single one in the sound of my voice, if we could be a moderator, if it was possible, then we never would have needed the systems we chose to fix our lives. We would simply moderate. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There are people I'm sure you know that just never have a problem with health. They're not moved by what's on the table. They can walk by a a table full of junk food at a party and not even think twice. Nah, I'm not in the mood. And just walk by. Or they can actually actually grab one or two chips and move on with their lives. And it's so abnormal that you look at them and you think they are crazy. No, they are moderators. The problem is, all of the people who should abstain have been taught that in the process of learning your lessons, it's okay, you can be a moderator. And I'm telling you that lessons need to be learned in order to ever be able to moderate. And if you don't ever learn those lessons because you've never abstained, how could you ever be a moderator? But Don, they're telling me, eat, eat whatever I want and, and, and I, I'll, I'll still lose weight. They'll tell you that over and over and over again while you hand them $50 a month. I know I would. I don't blame them. I don't. There comes a time where we all have to realize. And you look, you can use whatever vocabulary you want to use. You could say, I'm an emotional eater. You could say, oh, you know, w- w- come up with whatever, whatever vocabulary you want. The issue is and always will be the misuse of food. If we were talking about alcohol, there's no term that's gentle like emotional eating. And yet one exists for us. We've been taught from very young ages Food when we celebrate. Food when we're angry. Food when we're depressed.
or taught all of these things. Food becomes a coping mechanism. And it's birthed in those tough moments. The tough moments of life where we couldn't deal with the emotional trauma from whatever it was. But instead, we picked up a habit in the process. And now we're years and years and years later. We all have a problem that we're trying to fix. And we allow ourselves to lie to ourselves to tell what is true and try to spin it in such a way that makes the truth a lie. Because we're trying to avoid the knowledge that would cause you to question everything you've been doing. And as long as you're motivated by that feeling, as long as you're motivated by the desire you'll never learn the lesson needed to overcome it. That's the truth. That's part of the reason for last week's episode. Last week's episode, I introduced everyone to a new group I created. A group of people that I want to face accountability that are ready to fight the fight. No matter how painful it might be, to be accountable to themselves in a way that um, many people would try to avoid. And to be honest, when I thought of this idea, when I had this vision that I would create this scenario, I said to myself, there's not a chance in hell anybody's going to join this group. I don't think I'll find one. But I didn't. I didn't find one. I found nine. I can't even begin to speak of how much this surprised me. The fact that nine people would be there gave me pause to say, I want to do this the right way. I want to make sure that this is being guided by a hand I trust. I believe that God inspired the idea for me to have people on the podcast fighting the fight to create their redemption. A story that they, a fight that they have been fighting their entire lives played out on the air. It's part of the reason you all love listening to me. Because I tell you when I struggle. I tell you when I achieve things that even surprise me. I tell you when I attempt things that I so obviously seem crazy to try. And I tell you when I fail at those things too. Because part of all of this is growth. And if we're not doing anything to grow, then what are we doing? 
Is it not just going through with a hamster wheel? So when nine people showed up to this group, I decided to pray about it. I wanted a way of organizing all of this that would be guided by my prayer because I feel like this entire thing was inspired by God. So if it was inspired by him, then he would help me organize it in whatever fashion it needed to be organized. And in the process, I felt like I should give it just a little more time. I also feel like I have to stop membership at some point. I'm not saying I'll, ever, I'll never open it again. But what I'm saying is, I have to create a group that starts together and moves on together. And then at some point, I can create a new group that starts together and moves on together. So right now, there's nine in this group. And I'm leaving it open until the last podcast of this month, March 29th is the last podcast of the month. However many more people would like to join this group and start the real fight. Now, you'll be coming on the podcast. It's either going to be a a twice-a-month basis or a a once-a-month basis. I'm not really sure yet. You'll be coming on the podcast, and you'll be accountable, and you'll talk about the things we plan Together, the things we brainstorm, this is going to be essentially a workshop unlike any other workshop. You know, think about all the workshops you've been to. Anybody who's on WW listening to me, I want you to think about all the workshops you've ever been to and think about the best parts that happen in the workshop. The best, the best parts that happen in any workshop is the candid conversation. When does the candid conversation happen? When somebody is celebrating, when somebody is struggling. All of those moments are some of the most beautiful moments ever created in workshops. That's the vision. The vision is a workshop solely based on the candid discussion between a small group of people in what they're struggles with. What they've struggled with their entire lives from something that happened at childhood, whatever the case may be. That's the vision. A workshop on those moments alone. No techniques, no none of that other stuff. And a a workshop where we set goals, real, real goals that are expected to be achieved. Small, incremental, doable. And everybody will be accountable for the goals they set on a recorded podcast. So, call it registration, call it joining, call it whatever you want. RWW Redemption is open to join, and that will close at the last podcast of this month, March 29th. After that, this group will be closed. And their story will begin. Whenever I open the doors again for the next group, because I'm sure that once the first group begins, they are the pioneers that will give birth to many, many more groups. So welcome to all who have joined so far. Welcome to my pioneers. 
You are the beginning. And so many more will come from you. And maybe in the process of all this, you will learn things you never thought you were going to learn. And the only thing is that you must pay it forward. When you see a little bit of yourself in someone else, Pay it forward. Teach them the lessons you learned. You're not going to make them see it real quick. But if you start planting seeds, they'll see it eventually. If you're interested, RWW Redemption is the name of the Facebook group. There have been people that told me they cannot find it. I'm not sure why, but if you find me, if you send me an email, whether it's through the show, you know, the ranting weight watcher at gmail.com or you send me a message on Facebook or you post something on connect. I can't find the Facebook group. I'll send you the link. If that's you and you want that, the doors are open. I wonder if you'll humor me for a moment. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to breathe deeply and slowly. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep doing that. I'm going to ask you a question here. And what I want you to think about is the first thing you feel when I ask the question. I want you to think about your current situation, the truth about your current health situation. What is the truth of your health right now? What is the truth about how you're handling your health right now? Are you afraid right now? Is that the first emotion you felt? Do you feel fear? Do you feel anger? Do you feel sadness, depression? Do you have anxiety about your current methods of how you're handling your health and your current health situation? Do you feel any of these negative emotions that I just presented to you? If you do, I want you to picture today being March 22nd, 2024. What will your health be like? What will your situation be like in 2034 if you make no changes today? What will your situation be like in 2044 if you make no changes today what will your situation be like 30 years from now if you make no changes today and 40 years from now What medications will you be on? What illnesses would you have? If you make no changes today. And if you're young enough, 50 years from now, 
If you're feeling afraid, if you're feeling sad, depressed, and anxious of your current health situation and how you are handling it, what will it be like 50 years from now? What disease will you have that you're on medication for the rest of your life for? What pain in your body will you have because you didn't make any changes? What other ailments could there possibly be added to your current health situation if you make no changes about the way you're handling and the way you feel about your current health situation? Now I'm going to snap my fingers and take you back in time. We're going to go back 50 years to March 22nd, 2024. You just pictured what life would be like 50 years from now if you make no changes right now. I just gave you 50 years back. What will you do with that knowledge? You realize none of us can do it for you. It's all up to you. What will you do right now to change what you just saw 50 years from today? I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.